Today, I'm going to compare four investment grade floating rate corporate bond ETFs. These investments may also be known as floaters. What is a floater? Floater. All right, I say we push it out, hope the current carries it down to the next precinct. No, that's not the kind of floater I'm talking about. Okay, let's ask chat GPT what a floater is. Okay, I think number one is the correct answer. It's a, a type of debt security that pays a variable interest rate that's usually tied to an index such as LIBOR or another index. I have iShares Treasury Floating Rate Bond T-Flow as a reference. Now all of these, there's more than just four. I've actually left a lot of them off because some, some of them are so new that they don't have much as far as assets under management. So the smallest one they have here is the Invesco Actively Managed Exchange Traded Fund Variable Rate Investment Grade ETF. And it has around 600 million under management. And it also has the highest fee at 0.3%. Now the first two that I have, the iShares FLOT, I actually own some shares in this one. I, um, FL, iShares FLOT, the floating rate bond ETF, and FLRN, the SPDR, uh, Barclays Capital Investment Grade Floating Rate ETF, these are both based on the same index. Both of these are based on the Bloomberg US dollar floating rate note less than five year index. They both have the same 0.15% fee and they both have quite a bit under assets under management, 2.9 billion and 8.14. FLOT is the larger of the two. The next one I have is a different index. It's the Van X Investment Grade Floating Rate ETF. It has a slightly lower fee at 0.14%, 1.22 billion of assets under management. Now this one is a slightly different index. It's a completely different index, so the performance is gonna be a little bit different. So let's look at the performance. If we look at the one year, just the price return, you can see here uh, T-Flow obviously is the mo most stable because that's treasuries. You can see that um, it's the only one that's treaded above zero. It's the only one that's made a profit this whole time period that's above zero. You can see the zero here. All the other ones, the price fell below zero, slightly below zero, but they made up for it with the higher yield. So you'll see that they still made a profit after the yield is paid out. Now let's look. So as far as the the one that goes down the most is the Van Eck, the FLTR. That's the one that's its own index. And you can see that it's it's gone down is in July of, of 22, it's in July of 2022 it went down to about two and a half percent. Whereas uh, FLOT only went down to about one and a half percent, so it went down probably one and a half percent more. Now, if we look at the if we look at the recent highs, um, FLTR did the best at 0.59 percent, and then um, FLOT and then FLRN are basically about the same. You can see when I highlight it here. Here's the blue one, and then this one's almost the same. Watch the chart change. Okay, see, almost the same. But then we look at this one, you see it goes down quite a bit more and it just goes up. So there there appears to be more downside than upside. It goes down, it went down quite a bit more and it just went up just a little bit. Now, if we look at the third one that I threw in, the VRIG, it um it's kind of a it's, it's kind of in between. So it didn't go down quite as much as the Van X FLTR, but it's sort of in between the Bloomberg uh, US dollar floating rate note, these two ones, and this one. So it's kind of a compromise, but it does have a much higher fee, which I don't like, and it doesn't have much assets under management. So let's switch now to total return. You'll see that it changes. So everything that's below zero, you'll see that this changes. Okay, now you can see that uh, we started treading above zero much sooner after getting the uh, monthly yield and reinvesting it. So now you see that the highest return one was FLTR. That was the riskier one, the one that went down quite a bit. It's, um, 
3.73% for the one year. And then FLOT, the iShares floating rate, 3.37. And then FLRN is 3.31. And if we look at T-Flow, it's sort of, it's it's more like a straight line. You can see how stable T flow is, but not as much of a return. Now VRIG, uh, like I said, is sort of a, a cross between uh, this this FLTR and the FL and this index here. So it went up at three three point four five percent. Okay, let's go further back and look. Uh, let's look at the three year. The three year uh, total return, FLTR did the best at 8.36 then um, FLRN and FLOT are basically identical because they're the same index the same fee so roughly seven percent and then uh, T-flow is three percent and then V VRIG is just slightly below the FLTR so comparing these different ETFs which ones do I like the most which one do I like the best well, basically, FLOT and FLRN are basically identical. They both have the same 0.15% expense ratio. They both have basically the same holdings. They both have around the same duration. They cover the same index. Performance is about the same. I would say if you want to go for something that's a little bit riskier, go for the FLTR from Van Ectors. It has a low 0.14% expense ratio. It has 1.2 billion assets under management. It has a higher 5.26% 30-day yield. It holds 34% in B-rated debt, which is a higher percentage in the lower-rated investment-grade debt compared to um, FLOT and FLRN. So it's going to be slightly riskier. Also, the average maturity date is a little bit longer. It has some bonds that have a longer maturity and it has fewer holdings than it has 161 versus about 355 for the other two now um for the last one the invesco vrig i probably at this point i wouldn't recommend that one because they only have 594 million in assets under management it has a high 5.44 percent yield but it has a higher percent in B-rated debt, 20%, and also it's actively managed versus uh, an index. Another thing that I don't like about Invesco VRIG is they have 20% of their assets invested in floating rate treasury notes. Now, I, I'm a big fan of the floating rate treasury notes. However, they're charging you a 0.30% fee, and you can get floating rate treasury notes for 0.15% with uh, T-Flow. So, Really, you're, you're paying for a reduced performance and you're paying a higher rate for that. So I'm not a big fan of that. If You could go with T-Flow and get it much cheaper. And the duration shows average maturity of 2.3, which is a little bit longer. But when you start looking into it, they have some that are over 15. They have some maturities that are over 15 years, which is quite long. So I would be skeptical if they're going to continue to have such, uh, if the performance will do well over time especially with the higher fee. So I would I would probably lean towards FLTR over VRIG. So if you want to have a little bit more risk but higher yield, go for FLTR. Otherwise, it's a toss-up between FLOT and FLRN. That's my review on corporate bond floaters. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a good one. Floater! All right, I say we push it out, hope the current carries it down to the next precinct.